with all the bookworms to Brisden. My name is Whitney. If you're new here, the black dog here is Boo Boo, and this is Anya, and the others are running around. Um, but today we have a fun game. We are going to be doing 48 hour bingo, or in this case, honey, because it's Winnie the Pooh base. And yeah, I really love watching mini games. Um, in particular, I watch Allison on a book break. She does a bingo maze that I really enjoy watching. And then, of course, Stephanie at Stephanie's Bookverse, who has her mini star hop game, which I love watching as well. And so I wanted to do something because I just love those so much. And I was like, I'm always anxiously waiting to play my regular TBR game during the month. And so I thought, well, I'll do like something bingo related. But the thing is, I don't want to add on a lot of extra books to my TBR because this year is all about finding balance between reading and other hobbies. I don't have many other hobbies, but still want to try to find a little bit more balance. So a lot of these prompts are geared towards picking from my TBR I already have for the month. There are a few that are a little bit more of a wild card and so I could literally get anything. But for the most part, that's what it's geared towards. I have my board here. I'm going to go through the prompts. I'll put a picture up here, of course, so you can see it a little bit better. So under the H category, we have most anticipated of the month. Book for something you are participating in. So like February, I'm participating in Battle of the Girl Bands. I generally always participate in Kim from Expedition Through Pages, Tales from Two Trials game. Allison has a Start and Stop Buddy Read that I participate in. So just one of those books. An audio or digital book. A booktuber TBR. So that's one of the ones where I can literally get something that's not on my TBR because that's going to kind of be hard to match. Uh, so I'm just going to watch some booktube videos and see what I can find. And then most read genres. Under the U, we have shortest book on TBR. Hubby picks from my TBR. So he has to pick specifically from the books I'm already planning on reading. YA or adult. Goodreads or Storygraph, and less than 350 pages. So um, we have the short books under that category, so that's a good one to get. And then under the first N, we have Standalone, New to You Author, of course the free space, author you've read from before, and a series read. And then under the second N, we have Longest Book on TBR, Hubby Picks, any book. So he can literally pick anything he wants. It does not have to be from the books I'm reading this month. Middle grade or children's. Instagram or TikTok. So again, another one that I'm probably going to get something outside of what's on my TBR. And then greater than 350 pages. And then on the Y, the last uh, column there, we have least anticipated of the month. A mood read. So mood read, um, specifically for that one is going to be outside my TBR unless there's a book on there that I would read regardless like a book I'm really really excited about um, but most likely those I'm going to want to save for like most anticipated um, but if there's a book I would have read regardless but I was able to get it on my TBR then that can count as a mood read otherwise it has to be outside just something I really want to pick up physical read which the majority of my books are, so that one's really easy. That's kind of a gimme. And then a free choice, which the free choice needs to be specifically from my monthly TBR. And then least read genres. So that is the board. I do have a 10-sided die. And so basically I have two chances. So I'm going to roll to see which letter we get. Um, and so H is one or uh one or six, U <laughs> is two or seven, the first N is three or eight, the second N is four or nine, and then the Y is either five or zero in this case, which is going to be my ten. Um, so I got that, and then I'm going to be marking off the little spots with this washi tape, which has little bees on it, so I thought that was perfect for a honey bingo board. So I'll be marking off the spots 
that way. I might eventually, if I really enjoy doing this, kind of change it where I can um, maybe switch up the prompts. So like maybe laminate it and then I can just do a dry erase or wet erase marker or something like that. But for now, like I said, I kind of want something that's very much catered to what I already plan to read because I don't want to add on a lot of extra books. So let me go ahead and get set up. We'll get rolled and we'll see what my first prompt is. All right, so let's do our first roll and see which one we're gonna get. I'm gonna shake it real good in my hands and drop. Okay, so we got a seven, which is five, six, seven. So this is the, oh, you guys can't see, sorry. Not very good at this, obviously. So seven is, of course, you right here. So it's this column. Um, which is really good because, like I said, I got the short ones on that one, less than 350 pages, or the shortest book. So let's go ahead and roll again and see which spot we're going to get. Three. Perfect. So got a three. So that one's a nice one. So I got the U and the one, two, three is YA or adult. I'm going to pick the book and I'll be right back. All right, so these are our options. Just the one straight in front. These ones over here are my March TBR we picked out. So pretty much can read any of these. Um, other than I think Echo is more middle grade, but everything else is YA or adult. So I'm trying to think how I want to do this. I hmm. So these are what we're working with. I'm going to go ahead and think on it a bit more, and then I will be right back to show you what I ended up going with. All right, so I still don't know. I think I know what I'm going to go with, but I had three options that I was looking at. So these three were kind of made the short list from my TBR. These, uh, these two... Everything I got to fit a prompt for Battle of the Girl Band. So everything's for that. Um, but these two in specific are also for Tales from Two Trails, which again is put on by Kim from Expedition Through Pages. So I'm leaning towards one of these two because I only have till the 25th to get these read. And right now, I guess I should mention the date and the time. So right now it is Friday, February 9th. And it's about 7.30 in the morning. Um, I have some other things I'm going to do, so I'm actually planning on, instead of um, doing till 7.30 on Sunday, I'm actually going to go until 10 on Sunday, uh, just to give myself a couple more hours. And I like I said, I have other things to do before I can start reading, so I probably won't get started until 9 or 10 anyway reading these, but I just, just want to sit down and pick out what I was reading so I was all prepared. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I mean, this one I'm really, really excited to read, and this would be a great first book to read for the readathon, but I think I'm going to set this one aside um, for now, because that would also work for some other things. And so it's between these two. <laughs> like, hmm... I just don't know what I want to go with, so, uh, you know what? This is also for my ABC title challenge, so we're going to go with Dorothy Must Die. So this is going to be the first book I read. This is by Danielle Page, uh, and I'm just very intrigued by this one. Uh, like I said, it's for my ABC title challenge, so obviously for the letter D, uh, and yeah, it says basically, I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask to be some kind of hero. But when your whole life gets swept up by a tornado taking you with it, you have no choice but to go along, you know? Sure, I've read the books, I've seen the movies, but I never expected Oz to look like this. A place where good witches can't be trusted and wicked witches just might be the good guys. A place where even the road of yellow brick is crumbling. What happened? Dorothy. My name is Amy Gum. I'm the other girl from Kansas. I've been recruited by the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked and I've been given a mission. Remove the Tin Woodman's heart, steal the Scarecrow's, Scarecrow's brain, take the Lion's courage, and then Dorothy must die. So... 
that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to get to my chores so I can get to reading this and then I'll check back in with you guys once this is read. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's February 9th, which is a Friday and right now it's about 7.30, but I'm going to give myself until 10 on, uh, February 11th, Sunday. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. All right. It is about eight o'clock on Saturday, the 10th of February. And I don't think this 48 hour idea is going to work for me. Um, when I'm reading during the day, I just I have a hard time focusing. I definitely read better at night. And so, yeah, I did finish Dorothy Must Die, but it took me all day. Um, I read it past bedtime and then finally got to sleep. Um, and I didn't love this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if I got a book I loved, I could have read it a little bit faster. I did end up giving it a three stars because it was an easy read. I liked the premise and the idea of it. It's just the execution wasn't very well done. So basically, I mean, I know I read the synopsis for you guys, but just to recap, it is you have another girl from Kansas, Amy, who gets swept up by a tornado and dropped in Oz. But when she gets there, like, Oz is just all wrong, not what, you know, she read about or watched from the movie and the book. And so she's confused, and basically Dorothy came and kind of ruined Oz. Like, she's um, kind of siphoning magic, essentially. Uh, and so, like, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion are all wrong as well. And the good witch Glinda is not good. Um, and so basically everything's opposite. What you think is good is not good. And then the wicked are the ones that are trying to make things right. And so yeah, I like that premise. There's definitely a darker aspect. Like the scarecrow um, does like experiments on like the munchkins and the monkeys and such. So there's definitely that dark undertone, which I typically really like. Um, I mean, fairy tales can be pretty dark. Not that Oz, Wizard of Oz, is necessarily a fairy tale, but, you know, there's always kind of that dark undertone anyway. Um, but I like when retellings take it darker. And so I really like that aspect, but it just, it wasn't fully developed. The plot didn't progress hardly at all. Like, what you read in the synopsis about her, you know, she has to get the woodman's heart, get the scarecrow's brain, take the lion's courage, and then Dorothy must die. Like, none of that happens in this book. Um, it is a series, so it's kind of gonna, it, the last couple pages, and I mean the last couple pages, it did kind of come to that, um, where she's realizing she's gonna have to address these, the, you know, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and such, but there just wasn't a lot of progression, um, and the characters, like, they would pop up for a scene, and then nothing, you know, so... Like, I get Dorothy's the main character, but all the side characters and the people she's interacting, like, they weren't fully developed and fleshed out. They were just, you know, oh, here they are for a scene, and then you wouldn't hear from them for ages. Uh, and so that kind of got frustrating as well. Um, and so, yeah, it just wasn't really well executed, but it was easy. I mean, it's YA, so it was a pretty easy read, and I like that dark retelling aspect. Uh, so, yeah, it got three stars for me. Uh, and so... I guess all that we have now to do is to roll and see the next spot we're gonna get so just a reminder here's the board and so we have the YA uh, an adult space marked off now with our little B washi tape so cute I love it and so yeah let's go ahead and roll and see what our next read is going to be um, I don't think I mentioned though I mentioned that the 48 hour aspect's not gonna really work for me I decided to do this for a full week and just see how many books I can get read in a full week so that's gonna work a lot better um, I can read multiple books in a day but that's kind of rare uh, and so yeah we're gonna do a full week so we're gonna go from Friday to Friday um, and just see what I can get read in a week versus doing a 48 hour or even a 60 hour really wouldn't be enough. Um, and so that's the plan. So let me go ahead and get you guys all spun around and get our roll done and then we can see what we'll be reading. All right, so we got our dice here. So let's just kind of shake and toss, okay. And that landed on a five. So that is gonna be the Y column. 
here. And so let's see which prompt we get in the Y column too. Okay, and it's five again. Um, so we're gonna go all the way down here to least read genres. So if I have something that works in my TBR, I'm definitely gonna go for that. Um, but if I don't, I'll have to kind of think outside of my TBR. So I'm gonna see what we have and then I will be right back to show you my choice. All right, I checked my TBR that I need to read for the month and I did actually have two options which is really good. Um, so the first option is The Family Across the Street by Nicole Trope. I don't read a lot of mystery or thriller. Um, I mean, I do read, I do read it, but it's not something I gravitate to. So I definitely consider this one of my lesser read genres. Um, there's definitely some things that I read less than this, like poetry or manga slash graphic novels, things like that. But because this is not a genre I tend to gravitate to, I do tend to enjoy it when I pick them up, but they're not a top genre for me. So that's an option. And then why I enjoy this genre, I don't typically pick up a lot of it. So the other option is horror. And I have Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. And I am really, really interested in this one. But this is an extra one already on my TBR where this one is for my ABC title challenge. So this would be the smarter choice, but I am really, really interested in reading Vampires of El Norte, but this could also work for different prompts. So, I mean, I want to read this one, but my brain is telling me to go with this one. Uh, and I'm definitely less excited for this. So I think I'm going to go with The Family Across the Street. It's nice and short. Um, I do typically read mystery thrillers pretty quickly. So let's see here. That's 245 pages. Um, and I do still have another short one. Well, two short ones if I get like the less than 350 pages and such. So I still have options if I hit any of those squares. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with The Family Across the Street by Nicole Trope. Go ahead and read the synopsis for you. Um, and then I'll be back after that to tell you my thoughts once I get there. And hopefully this one I can finish early and then have another choice for tonight. That would be ideal. So it says... Everybody wants to live on Hogarth Street, the pretty tree-lined avenue with its white houses. The new family, the West, are a perfect fit. Catherine and John seem so in love, and their gorgeous five-year-old twins, <clears throat> excuse me, race screeching around their beautiful emerald green lawn. But soon people start to notice, why don't they join backyard barbecues? Why do they brush away offers to babysit? Why, when you knock at the door, do they shut you out rather than inviting you in? Every family has secrets, and on the hottest day of the year, the truth is about to come out. As a tragedy unfolds behind closed doors, the dawn chorus is split by the well of sirens, and one by one, the families who tried so hard to welcome the West begin to realize Hogarth Street will never be the same again. So, uh, I found this at a little thrift store, and I'm excited to get to it. So that is my pick, and you will see me in just a moment. Hopefully, it's still Saturday the 10th. But we shall see, and I will be back as soon as I get this read. All right, it's still Saturday, February 10th. It's about 5.45-ish. Um, and I did finish The Family Across the Street by Nicole Trope. Unfortunately, I did not love this one. Only a two-star read for me. It was very slow and repetitive. Um, there's four point of views. The one point of view I actually really, really enjoyed. Um, but the others just was a slog. Like I said, it was kind of basically the same thing. They thought something was going on, but do they interfere or do they don't just over and over again? Uh, so that kind of got a little bit frustrating and really it wasn't until like the last, not even 20 pages, like probably 40 pages because the last of uh, like 15 pages or so was like the epilogue and so that wasn't very exciting um but up to that point it was just really slow and that was just kind of 
over it, but I did make it through. It was really rainy today, and so I really would have loved to enjoy this because, like, psychological thrillers and such, when it's all rainy and cloudy and gross outside would have been perfect, but it just fell short. I did like it has an ex-convict in here, um, which I really, really liked because you don't necessarily get that point of view and kind of the judgment because he has a bunch of, like, tattoos and such. And so the judgment and such he faces and the struggles to get a job. It does take place in Australia, which I didn't realize. So that kind of aspect was cool as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it just fell a little short. But I am ready to choose my next read. I don't know what I'm going to do right now. Whether I'm going to just jump into my next read or I might get on the computer and play World of Warcraft with my husband a little bit. I don't know yet. I haven't quite decided. Um... I might go ahead and get on the computer and take a little break from reading, but I might just go ahead and jump back in as well, depending on what I get, I suppose, will determine what I do. So let me get you all turned around so we can do our roll and see where we're at. So right now we're not even close to a bingo. So we have this one, which was the YA and adult, and then this one was the uh, least read genres, um, which I don't read a whole lot of psychological thrillers, which is actually interesting because, or thrillers in general, um, because for my genre-a-thon, which is my read-a-thon that I do every month, uh, for March it's psychological thrillers, so I'll be reading one of those then as well. Um, and so that definitely works. So yeah, we got one here and one here, but not anywhere close to being else. So let me, like I said, get you guys turned around and we'll see what we get. All right, so here we are. So we got our dice here, so I'm just going to roll it, see which column we're going to do. Oh, it hit the washi tape, but it did get a six. So that is going to be our um, H column here because it just rolls right around. So let's see here. So we got a lot of good ones we can get there. So let me go ahead and see what we're going to get there. And it landed in the washi tape. Let me remove that and do that again. Okay, and so we got another five. So now we're going to go to most read genres. I'm going to go choose a book and I will be right back. All right, I am back. I got four choices. They're all kind of fantasy-esque. So that is definitely probably one of my more read genres. Um, and so we can read Eldest by Christopher Paolini. Um which is, of course, like young adult fantasy. Uh, that would be an option, but this would also work really well if I get, like, longest book on TBR. I don't know if this one's the longest or one of my other ones, but this one's definitely up there because it's, like, I don't even know how many pages, 681. So it's definitely one of the longer ones. Um, so that... One I think I'm going to wait on. I don't think I'm going to read that right now. And then we have um, the two Carissa Broadbent books, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, and then the little novella that goes as, um, so The Crowns of Nyaxia is a duology, but The Six Scorched Roses is a novella that's in that world. And so I could read either one of those. I think you're supposed to read, um, Six Scorched Roses first and then this one, but I don't think it truly matters, and I'm happy to read them in either order, honestly. Um, but those would also work for some other things that are on the board, so I don't think I'm leaning towards those. And the other one is For the Throne by Hannah Witten, and I think this is the one I'm going to go with because I read For the Wolf in, was it January? Yeah, it had to be, no, December? Maybe. I think it was December. Yes, it was December. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, so I really am excited to get to this one. So I think this is going to be the one I go with for this prompt because I just, I can't wait to read this one. Um, and I have some other ones I'm excited that would work for like most anticipated and such. So yeah, I'm going to be reading For the Throne by Hannah Witten. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to start this right now or jump on the computer first. So my next update definitely won't be till tomorrow either way. 
Um, because even if I start it now, I doubt I would finish it tonight. And so I'm probably going to be reading it in the morning. And then I will get back on to update you at that time when I get this read. So, all right. It is several days later. It is now Wednesday, February 14th. So happy Valentine's Day. Um, but I did finally finish For the Throne by mm -hmm. Hannah Witten. Um, and I enjoyed it, but I really, really struggled to get into it. So I ended up not reading um, Saturday. I went ahead and got on and played uh, World of Warcraft with my husband. I did read like 30 pages that night right before bed. And then Sunday we had to run into town, do some errands. Um, and then we played WoW again for the rest of the day. And then I had like an allergic reaction. So I took some Benadryl. Didn't read anything Sunday night. Um, Monday had chores and such I needed to do. So only read a little bit on Monday. And then yesterday tuesday i read a good chunk of the book um it was really nice outside i had to water trees uh so i went and sat outside with the dogs and watered trees and got them water in their pool and such it's still kind of cold at night but during the day it's been really nice uh and then i read the rest of it today so just for whatever reason though like as much as i enjoyed it i just couldn't get into it um i just was very distracted and so I just kind of took my time with it. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it. Probably more of a four star. I didn't love it. I can't remember what I gave it the first one in the series, whether that was a four star or a five star. I want to say I gave that one five stars. Um, but yeah, this one just wasn't quite connecting with me. Even though I actually like the couple because this follows Neve, um, who is read from the first one's sister. Um, it's more focused on her and then her, her kind of love interest. And so I kind of like the love interest better and I liked aspects of the story. But the problem, it kept jumping back to like Red's perspective or Raph's perspective. And so jumping back to their perspectives kind of took me out of the story a little bit. So I'd just be getting into it and then I'd jump and then i kind of lose focus. Uh, but I still really enjoyed it, and I'm glad I got it read. So that duology is wrapped up. Uh, so this is kind of how we stand right now. Not even close to a bingo. We only have a couple more days. Since I have been kind of distracted, this first round's kind of been more of a test. I might actually go through the weekend. My plan was just to go to Friday, but I might go through the weekend. But again, I might play World of Warcraft with my husband over the weekend. So I don't know. I'm just going to kind of go until I feel like I've read a good amount and just see how close I can get to a bingo. Excuse the dogs. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where we stand now. Let's go ahead and get you guys flipped around and we can see what my next prompt is and then I can choose my next book. So, all right. So let's go ahead and see which column we're going to be doing. So we get four, which is the second N. Uh, let's see if I can go ahead. So yeah, this N right here. And then let's go ahead and see which prompt we're going to get. So there's nothing in there that we've gotten so far. And that is a five, which is good. That's actually getting us close to a bingo because five, of course, is down here at the bottom. So I need greater than 350 pages. And we already have... Um, two marked in that row. So let me go ahead and see which books I have that are greater than 350 pages and I will be right back. All right, so that was a good round because we actually got this space here which is greater than 350 pages. So we're two away from actually getting a, a honey. So, <laughs> and that would actually be a nice honey because it would actually go across and, and spell honey. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for that. I had five books. One of them is an extra book, so I'm not including that one. So there's four books for me to choose from, but I do want to be kind of st st strategic <laughs> if I can get those out. So these are the four I'm kind of looking at. Um, this one would work for one of my um, Spice Girl prompts for Battle of the Girl Band. And I need to get one more so I can start stealing from other teams. 
so this would be an option and this is like 601 pages 600 and 600 pages even <laughs> so not including the little author's note slash acknowledgement so yeah so that's an option I'm definitely very interested in this one the other one that would work so I could fulfill the last prompt that I need before I can start stilling is Echo by Pam Muniz Ryan uh, and this one is let's see 500 and 87 pages um so that would work and this is a like middle grade so the font's pretty big so this would actually read quickly but i know from reading carissa broadbent before her books tend to read quicker as well um so even though they're chunky they tend to be quick reads so those are the two options the other one is for um, this one I can use to steal, and it's also, but again, I need to read another book before I can steal. And this is also for Kim from Expedition Through Pages, her Tales from Two Trails game. This is the last one I need to read for those prompts to help my team get more points. Um, so this one's an option. It is 481 pages. And again, these read really quickly. The last one, which I don't think think works for any other prompts but it works for to steal would be eldest by christopher paulini so this one is chunky again reads pretty quickly um but i don't think i'm gonna go with this one at all this is 668 pages so but this one's kind of off the short list just because I can't steal yet um, and it doesn't work for anything else this one I think I'm gonna wait I do have until the 25th to get this read um, and so I still have like 10 more days to get this read so I'm gonna hold off on this one as well so basically it comes down between these two um, and so it's just which one am I more interested in reading I know I'm more interested in this but I feel like this is going to be the easier read and since it took me so long to finish for the throne I'm like maybe I should go for the easier read um but I'm hoping you know this one is going to be one that I really love and I can really get into as well so that is just the question <laughs> which one I want to I want to read I think um I think I'm gonna go with this one I'm gonna save this one uh, it will be easy to get read at whatever point I decide to read it. So I think I'm going to go with The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, which of course is book two in the Crowns of Nyaxia series. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I definitely, you know, I enjoyed the first one. It was a five star, but I definitely prefer her War of Lost Hearts trilogy over this duology so far. But maybe this book will help change my mind a little bit. I know a lot of people prefer this duology over the War of Lost Hearts trilogy, um, but so far I've been opposite. But yeah, I'm excited to jump back into this world and see where it takes us. Um, basically, short synopsis, I'm not going to read it from here because this is obviously the second book, but in the first one you have Araya and Rain. Um, are the two main characters and Araya is basically the adopted daughter of like a vampire king but she obviously lives in this vampiric world where it's very dangerous there's kind of different factions of vampires um, and so there's like a lot of political strife between these different factions and there's this thing called the Kajari um, which is basically a tournament and whoever wins gets a wish granted from the goddess Nyaxia um, and so she's hoping to win so she is not prey in a predator filled world essentially so she can make her wish but things happen and rain is from a different um, kind of faction but they kind of form an alliance to get through you know the beginning stages of the Kajari so yeah I'm excited to get back into this world and see if maybe I'll enjoy it. I mean, like I said, it was still five stars, but the War of Lost Hearts trilogy I just love so much. But maybe this one will change my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and get tucked into this one. It's about 
4.30 on Wednesday, so my husband should be home in a couple hours, so I'm hoping to read some of it before he gets home, and then of course we'll break for dinner and whatnot, uh, and then I'm hoping to get a big chunk of it read tonight, uh, and then I can hopefully finish it up early tomorrow and get another book on this TBR tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of have to see how it goes. Like I said, it's already Wednesday. I was originally going to do this for 48 hours, decided to extend it to a full week, so from Friday to Friday. But it's already Wednesday, so I only have a couple days left, so I might extend it longer. Um, like I said, this is my first round of this, and so I'm kind of testing it out. I definitely think a week is good. It's just this week there was some extra things, and I didn't get as much reading done as I would have liked to. So we're going to go with this one, and I will be back when I have an update for you guys. All right, it is Monday, February 19th, and I finally finished uh, The Ash Ashes and the Star Cursed King by Chris Broadbent. I, The War of Lost Heart Chili is still my favorite by far, but I really, really like this one better than the first book in this duology. I think the way you kind of have like a enemies to lovers kind of uneasy alliance situation and I really liked how the author did that because it wasn't just like, you know, pure lust and oh, we just, you know, fall in bed together and then we end up falling in love. You really kind of saw that development of their emotions and their trust and just like realizing that they could trust each other and such. I really liked how it developed. And there's also a situation with um, the main character, her vampire dad. And I liked how that was handled as well because you kind of see that trauma and it's like she's mad at this, you know, her dad, but you see, you know, how she still loves him, but she's mad at him and she's realizing that maybe how she was treated wasn't very fair and things like that. So I really liked that dynamic as well. I thought it was really well done. I liked how she ended things. I thought it was going to, I mean, you kind of knew how it was going to end, but I thought it was going to come about one way and it came about a different way. So I really, really liked that. So yeah, another five star read. I think I've given every single book by this author five stars. I still have to read the little novella. Um, that kind of goes along with this. It's in this world that follows a couple of the characters. So I'm a lot more excited to read that. But I did finally finish that. I think I'm going to keep uh, doing the bingo until Friday. I am hoping this week I can get a lot of reading done. Um, just because this is kind of the last main week I have to read things and get things read. So right now this is kind of where we stand. I'm really hoping to get the less than 350 pages today because then I can do that little novella. That would be fantastic. Or I could even do it if I get a series read and that would help me on my way to getting this honey. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get you guys turned around and roll and see what we're going to be getting today. All right, here we are. So let's go ahead and see which column we're going to be doing. So that is a nine. So this is going to be the second N again. Uh, so it doesn't help us on our way to a bingo, but let's go ahead and see which tile we get. And that is a four. Um, so we have, of course, let's see. So one two, three, four is Instagram or TikTok. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll and see maybe what comes up. I'm really hoping to get one of my TBR books, um, but we'll just have to see how that goes. I think I'm going to start with Instagram because I prefer it over TikTok, uh, and we'll just kind of go from there. All right, I'm back. That took so long. I just couldn't find a lot that I wanted to read or was on my TBR. I do have a couple options that came up multiple times. So I'm thinking in kind of the spirit of what this prompt is, I should go with one of those. However, really looking hard to see if there's any of the books that were on my TBR, I did manage to find God Killer. Forget the author's name, but I'll insert a picture here. 
way up on a book. It was a picture of a bookshelf and it was there. And I was like, that is on my TBR, but it's on my TBR as extra. It works for Battle of the Girl Bands. Um, so I can do that. And it's a like team buddy read. Uh, so I could do that and get points for that, which would be fantastic. I also found um, the uh, Emily Wilde's the second one, the Otherland one. I saw that and I do have the audio for that one, but again, it's not on my TBR at all. I just really, really want to uh, listen to it. So that one's an option. And then the two that popped up multiple times, um, first is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. Uh, this one would be super quick and easy, so since it is an extra, I could go that route. And then the other option, which popped up on both uh, Instagram and TikTok, is Archer's Voice by M Mia Sheridan. I just don't know that I'm ready for this one, honestly. Um, this one would be the pick kind of in the spirit of the prompt since it did pop up in both places, but I just... I don't know that I'm ready for it. I really, I'm just not. This is one I think I'm going to absolutely love. And it's one of the ones that I just, I just want it to sit there. And I want that anticipation because I have a feeling once I read it, I'm going to completely love it. And I'm going to want to read it all over again. So this one I think I'm going to pass on. So it leaves the other. So audiobook would be nice because I can do it while doing chores. But then once the chores are over, I hate just sitting there listening to an audiobook. Um, but I do have a lot of chores to do. So that is an option. And I really, really do want to do that book. Um, I think I'm going to pass on this even though, <clears throat> like I said, <clears throat> this popped up multiple times. I think I'm still going to pass on that. Just because even though I'm doing, <clears throat> excuse me, this game. I still want to try to read books that were on my radar for the month, and neither one of those is. So I think I'm going to pass on that. So it comes down between Emily Wilde's, the second Emily Wilde's, or God Killer. Um, and like I said, God Killer would get me points for Battle of the Girls. She's trying to lick my books. Well, Stinka. Um, I think I'm going to go... Shoot. I do have a lot of chores to do today. But you know what? I think I'm going to go God Killer. Um, just because, and it kind of fits in, you know, I just read this, which, the Ashes and the Star Curse King, which has goddesses, um, and kind of has that vibe, and so I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to get some points for Battle of the Girl Band, and that's what I'm going to go with. So, I will be back after I read that and tell you what I think. Alright, it's Tuesday, February 20th. I'm not completely finished with God Killer, but I almost am. Uh, and so before I get to cooking dinner and everything like that, I wanted to go ahead and choose my next book so I can finish up God Killer after dinner and then jump right into my next book. So far, I do enjoy God Killer. I'm finding myself having to go back and reread sections um, just because the way things are phrased is a little bit off uh, and I don't fully understand what they're saying. So I have to like jump back and reread it and then I was oh, okay, that's what they meant. So that's kind of a little bit frustrating, but the story itself I'm really enjoying. Um, I like that you kind of have this ragtag crew. There's different age ranges, which I always typically enjoy. Um, so you got a young girl who's about 12. You got the God Killer um, and then an ex-knight. And they're all kind of on the same path. The knight has his quest and they have to go to this old city that was destroyed during a war um, where they were trying to kill the god of war essentially from what I can understand um, among other gods and so yeah you have this ragtag kind of crew and of course there's dangers and such that they're trying to avoid like detection there's something more with the girl that we haven't quite learned yet so I'm excited to see kind of <clears throat> how that finishes playing out. So I am enjoying it, but we'll go ahead and get our roll. So right now this is how the board stands. So I'm hoping either to get a series read or 
um, less than 350 pages, so I can hopefully get a bingo by the end of this week. But we'll just have to see where it lands, so I want to get you guys flipped around, and then we'll see what we get. Alright, here we go. So first roll to see which column we're going to be in. And I got zero, which is ten, which means we're not on a road to a, a honey, because that's the Y column. Um, and we already have that one filled out on the bottom there. So now let's go ahead and see which one we get, which prompt we're going to get. So we're going to get, so that is nine. So, ooh, I like this. So that is, um, so it just loops back around. So that is actually a free choice. I can pick anything I want. So let me go ahead and see what I want to pick. I think I know, and I'll be right back. All right. So even though we didn't get to get closer to getting a honey, I am pretty happy because we got a free choice. Um, so even though that doesn't really help us get a honey, it helps me out reading-wise. So I actually have two options. The first one is the little novella for six, uh, it's called Six Scorched Roses, but it's the novella set in the Crowns of Nyaxia, a series by Crystal Broadbent, and I just read, of course, the second in that duology, and so I really am interested in reading this, like I'm excited to. Um, and especially now that I'm more familiar with the characters this is going to be following, I'm ex excited for that. But I do, and this one I am excited for as well, but I do need to read this before the 25th, so I only have five more days, and I would like, this is the last one, this is my last book for Kim from Expedition Through Pages, Tales from Two Trails game, and so I would like to get this read and just log them all. Um, and be done with that. So I think I'm actually going to go with this one. And these, the Four Horsemen series, have read really, really fast for me. Um, and so I should be able to start it tonight and then finish it up tomorrow and hopefully get another book on tomorrow. Uh, and I've been really excited for this one. I love the first one in the series. The next two were kind of meh for me. They were still five stars. That's the thing. Like, the writing itself is five stars. But I didn't love the characters. Um, but, you know, they're the Four Horsemen. And, yeah. So, I'm hoping I'll really enjoy this one. Um, I'm excited to kind of how the last one left it. Setting up for this one. Even though each one you can really read by itself so far. I'm hoping this one kind of brings them all together. But we shall see. So, this is the one I'm going to go with. Death by Laura Thalassa. And, yeah, I'm excited for it. So, I will check back in. Um, when I finish reading this one and I'll let you know if I have any further thoughts on God Killer or if it's just kind of the same. Uh, and then when I think about this one and then this will finish up a series for me. So that's exciting as well. So that's the one I'm going to go with and I'll check back in a moment. All right. It is Thursday, uh, the 22nd of February and I have finished Death. I absolutely love this. I've loved every single book in this series. Um, they were have all been five stars, even though I didn't particularly like the uh, war and kind of the relationship between war and his love interest. I didn't particularly like that. Um, the last one, Famine, he kind of got enjoyment out of the cruelty, um, but the writing itself has been five stars in every single book. I still think Pestilence is my favorite, which is the first book in the series. But I really like this one. This one did definitely bring them all together. The other three can be read as standalones. Um, you don't necessarily need to read one to read another. But this one definitely kind of brought them all together. So I really like that. There's definitely moments, especially regarding, like, parenthood, I guess. Like, she loses her mom and such. There were moments that definitely brought tears to my eyes. Uh, and yeah, I just really, really love this. Definitely five stars, but it is time to choose my next book. I'm definitely going to be reading through tomorrow. I think, um, depending on which book I get and how I finish it, I'll probably pick another book tomorrow and finish reading it this weekend. Um, but I think, I don't know, we'll just see how it plays out. Um, so tomorrow I should have one more pick after whatever I pick 
this round. So this is kind of where we're looking at right now. Um, and so we have these where I can get a bingo potentially, depending. Um, I can maybe get one here if I can get some good books, but let's go ahead and flip you guys around and see what I roll. All right, here we go. So first up, which column are we going to get? So that is zero, which in this case is 10. So that lands us in the Y column again. So we're working our way up instead of across, but let's go ahead and see which one we get. So if we get either um, five, 10, four or nine, I'll just have to roll again, but let's go ahead and see what we get. So I got four, so we already landed on that square. So let me go ahead and roll again. So seven, so five, six, seven. Ooh, nice. So this is mood read. Uh, so I can literally pick anything I want. This one's more like literally a mood read. So I, if I have something on my TBR that I would read regardless, um, that I'm really in the mood for read, I can choose it. Otherwise, it does need to be something I just really want to read outside of my TBR. So I'm going to see if there's anything on my TBR that I'm still in the mood for, and I'll be right back. All right, that was a great spot to land on. So this is what we're looking at now. So we are two away from a bingo here and two away from a bingo here. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really happy with that spot that we landed on. And... Uh, I do have some options. So as far as what's on my TBR, um, I'm really interested in Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent because I just finished uh, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King the other day. And so I'm like still kind of in that world. So I'm very, very interested in this. That's a strong contender. Plus, it's really short, so it should be quick and easy. Uh, the Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. This is definitely a mood read. It's not officially on my TBR, but it is because of Battle of the Girl Bands. Um, and I also got it for Christmas, so I just want to read it sooner rather than later. So that's a strong contender as well. I could also go with the audiobook I got this month, which of course is the second one in the Emily Wilde series by Heather Fawcett. I love the first one, and so... That one, I'm just really interested. I'm just not really in the mood for an audiobook right now. Um, so I'm not leaning that way, even though I really want to listen to that story. And the other one I have is Traveling the World to Find the Good Death from Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doty. Um, and this one I also got for Christmas. My husband got it for me because I read her other two books and absolutely loved them. The I was looking on my TBR cart, and this is the only one that really stood out to me as far as what I potentially would want to read right now, um, because I've been reading all these books that have, like, gods and such in them, and it would just go really well with kind of the theme I have going on. However, it would be an extra book, and I'm running out of time this month, so I don't think I'm going to read this one either. So basically, it comes down to backwards to these two, and as far as what I'm in the mood for right now, I gotta go with Six Scorched Roses um, by Carissa Broadbent, just because, like I said, I you know read that book, then death, and now like it kind of got a little break from that world, and I'm ready to dive back in. I really want to dive why that world's still really fresh in my mind. So I'm going to go with Six Scorched Roses by Chris Bodnett. Um, I'm hoping I can actually finish this tonight. Um, and then, let's see, how many pages is this even? Yeah, it's 183 pages. I should definitely be able to finish this tonight. Um, and so I should be able to come back in before I go to bed and choose my next book, but I might wait till the morning just depending on when I finish this. My husband and I are still have a book we're reading together that we're trying to finish up. So I even if I chose a book tonight, I probably wouldn't start it tonight anyway um, because I do want to finish that book I'm reading with him. <laughs> we have less than 100 pages now, um, but I would really like to finish that by the end of the month. So yeah, this is my choice, and I will check back in 
probably tomorrow morning, but maybe tonight. We'll just see, and I'll see you in just a moment. All right, so it is Friday the 23rd of the morning, and I did finish Six Scorch Roses by Krista Broadbent last night. I love this. I, I just really, really like this author's writing. Um, everything has been five stars for me, and in this one, like, it makes sense because we do see the two characters from this book in The Ashes and Star Cursed King, and they kind of make a reference to how Lilith is very blunt and such, but she's actually neurodivergent, and so you really see that because you're getting it from her viewpoint, and it really comes across in this book, which of course, being autistic, I love that representation. I really, really enjoyed uh, Lilith as a character, and it was just really well done. For a little novella, it had everything you needed in it, and I just absolutely love this. Like, if I could have given it more than five stars, I definitely would have. This is a book I can see picking up again and again because it's such a quick, easy read. And if I just want those vibes, I can pick this up and read it really quickly. So yeah, absolutely love this. So I mean, you need to choose my next read. Um, so again, this is kind of how the board sits. So I'm hoping for either one of these or in the Y column, one of these. But we'll just have to see what we kind of get here and go from there. So let me get you guys flipped around and we'll get the dice out. Alright, so let's go ahead and roll and see which column I'm going to be under. Zero. So we are under Y again. Uh, and so now we just need, so we need a one, a six, a three or an eight. One, six, three, or eight. Nothing else will work. So that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Okay, so we got an eight, which this one's kind of, again, a gimme. It's a physical read. So basically, whatever's on my TBR, I only have one digital read left, so that one wouldn't work. So I'm just gonna go see which book I want to pick up today. All right. So I had five books left on my physical TBR. I have six books left total that I need to get read this month. Um, and we have a week left, basically. But two of those were extras, so I didn't even pick those up. So I have three that I'm considering. The first one is Alex Trebek. The answer is Reflections on My Life. And this one is a TBR fail from previously, so I definitely want to get to this one and I am really interested in it. It's the shortest of the three. Um, it comes in at, let's see here, 287 pages, but there's also a lot of like pictures and such. So it's going to be really easy to read. I have no doubt about that. So that's definitely a strong contender. We also have Eldest by Christopher Paolini that I need to get to. This is, of course, a chunky one, but being kind of more YA, um, it definitely reads faster. So that's an option, and I would kind of like to get to this one um, just because it's the last big chunky book I have on my TBR, so it would be nice to just get that. And I can save some of the easier reads for like the last push, I guess. And then the other one, which is also chunky, is Echo by Pam Yunus Ryan. This one is like middle grade though, so again, it will read super fast. I don't know if it has pictures, but I mean, the font's huge, so it would read quickly as well. Um, and I really just don't know what I want. I think I'm going to hold off on Echo. It's just not really calling to me at this point. So it's really whether I want to get my chunky book off my TBR or if I want to kind of have an easier read um, and finish a book that's been on a TBR before and that I didn't get to. So that's, that's the question is which one I want to go with. I think because today's just going to be reading, I don't have like chores or anything um, that I need to do. I think 
I'm gonna go with Eldest because I can really push today and hopefully get a big chunk of this red. And like I said, I know the answer is gonna be quick, so I'm not too worried about maybe reading it this weekend while I'm doing other things or really pushing, you know, the last few days of the month to get that red. Uh, and then this one will be for sure red, and since it's so chunky, it'll be nice to have that off my PR and done. So I'm going to go with Eldest by Christopher Paolini. This is the second book in the Inheritance Cycle. And so basically you have Aragon and he finds this dragon egg and the dragon riders are no more. There was kind of this dragon rider that went rogue and overtook the kingdom. And so then he finds this dragon egg and people are after him. So he's like kind of on this quest to figure out to learn about dragon riders and kind of figure out what to do and so he meets like elves and dwarves and such like very classic fantasy um and so this is going to be what i go with and i will check back in with you when i'm done i think i'm gonna try to do one more at least even if i don't finish this um i want to get one more so I'm going to try to do one more roll, but hopefully I can finish this, like really push and finish this today. The problem is during the day, I have a hard time focusing on books. I'm more of a night reader. Night is when I can get like a big chunk read, but I'm going to do my best with this. Hopefully it'll draw me in. And so that is the plan. And I'll check back in with you when I'm done and we'll see if I either do another roll or just kind of wrap this video up. Um, I think I want to do at least maybe over the weekend and then just put this video out late on Monday, but we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, it is Sunday, February 25th. I have not finished Eldest yet. I'm only about a third of the way through, but I did want to wrap up this video so it could go up tomorrow. Um, and not loving it so far. Aragon, which is the first book in the series, really... You could tell it was written by a teenager, but the story moved along, the p plot, the pacing, and everything was good. There were moments of angst, but overall, the story was good. This one, like, it's not good. <laughs> not good. So far, like, maybe it'll change. Like I said, I'm only a third of the way through, but so far, like, there's these conflicts that don't go anywhere. Like, they happen, and then they're just out of sight, out of mind. Um, there's a lot of inks and it's very disjointed. Um, and like he's trying to do like love with um Aragon's cousin and the girl he's interested in marrying. Um, and it's clear he doesn't really understand what that is. Like it's just not well written at all. I am gonna continue to read it and push through, but a bit of a letdown so far. We did not get a bingo, or a honey, rather. Um, and so this is kind of where the board is left as we're finishing. We were really close right here, and we were close here. Um, I think I do plan on playing this next month, and I think I'm going to leave the stickers on, um, or the washi tape on, and just see what I get next month. Uh, I do have a family trip to Vegas next month. Um, and so that's going to take like a week out of the running. I'll be able to read while I'm there. So this one, I know it was supposed to be 48 hours originally, turned into a week and then turned into two weeks. I'm kind of going to play it loose next month as well and just kind of see what works for me. Um, because part of this is just another fun way to see which book I'm reading next. And yeah, so I don't want to it to be very stressful so next month is going to be very loose as well but I'm definitely going to at least go for a week so we'll see uh and so yeah I ended up reading in the two weeks let's see here so we have eldest of course and then we have these books so I ended up reading one two three four five six and partial a third uh and so that's actually not bad at all I'm pretty happy with what I got read um and yeah I got a lot of good good books read and I'm excited to see how the game progresses as we go forward if you have any tips or suggestions for the honey bingo definitely let me know down in the comments below and I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here happy reading everyone bye